Hi guys, Jeremy Morgan here from Delonix, and today I have Tamsin on the line here. She's been working with us for a number of years, and I guess what inspired me most about Tamsin's story, which um, I was actually only, I think last week, uh, talking to Tamsin, heard some of these figures. It was, uh, it was uh, really encouraging and, and inspiring, and I, I asked Tamsin if she would mind having a quick uh, chat with us and, and sharing some of the success that she's had with outsourcing. So. Thank you very much, Tamsin, for uh, fitting me into your schedule and agreeing to this. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. So uh, you've been working with us for a few years. Can you give us a bit of background on um, you know, how long it's been and, and sort of where you were at the beginning before you started building a team offshore? Mm -hmm. um, so at the time, I was working um, for a, a digital agency um, and they had at the time... A team, a team overall of staff of 25. Mm -hmm. And when I um, heard the concept of a VA and really had someone present it to me in a way that was tangible, I just jumped on it. I was in an all day um, business workshop and there was about a thousand ideas laid out mm -hmm. for me. And I had a sleepless night that night. And I said, this is what, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, persuading uh, my clients to go to to take the step towards um, hiring our first VA was a little challenging because, you know, it was like, oh, the time zone, all the typical, um, you know, uh, barriers to entry. But I just, I just knew that the, the labor costs were, were high. And obviously one of my mandates was to reduce um, operating costs. And yeah. the second thing was we were actually struggling to find entry level positions. So the positions we were looking for, for was admin, Base, um, um, admin accounts and our help desk, uh, support desk team. When you were saying struggling to find, you mean locally you were struggling to find? Yeah, struggling to find them locally that were, um, that were, that was, they were reliable uh -huh. um, because a lot, it was, you know, the, for what we could afford for the positions that were entry level positions, yeah. you know, they were sort of uni students that would come and go, yeah. their boredom factor, you know, was high and, and they, I mean, um, we had some great people, but there was a high turnover and it was just, and it just felt relentless at the time, just constantly trying to fill, um, just hiring constantly. Yep. And um, when I, when I had trained someone for four months, it was a mother <laughs> and I'm a mother now, so I understand, but it was a mother. I trained her for four months and then she resigned. I was just like, that's it. And I, I um, I just, I, I, I calculated the numbers. I was like, it's, it's going to cost us about $3,000 to, to take the leap, which was the hiring costs and running them through for like three or four months. And the only, the worst thing it was going to cost me was, was the, um, the time if it didn't work out. Sure. And it, yeah. And I, um, I, I kind of knew what needed to be done just instinctively. So I made sure that I had the manuals in place, yep. you know, getting, getting the files into a, um, into a, a place that was accessible for them uh, remotely was, you know, was something, but I didn't let it stop me. So anyway, so that was it. So I, I just went ahead and contacted you guys and um, yeah, and began. So you, you mentioned some barriers to entry um, a few minutes back. Can you elaborate more on, on what your specific barriers to entry were or what has um, the, the language was, was a problem. So I, I sort of broached it that they wouldn't have to be client facing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he made the decision that some of the, the key parts of the business he wanted to hold on to. So obviously sales, the time zones was another, um, which obviously, you know, you guys handle really well. We have the team starting 9am Sydney start time. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that worked well, um, that, that, that idea, like how would they access, we had all of our client files on a local server and it was like, how could they access the client files? And that was like a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then one day I sat down and I was like, well, do they actually need to access that? So there was a bit of creativity that had to go into like, how are we going to work around this? Um, and it was just actually dissecting tasks more in more detail. So they would do 75% of the tasks. And then, you know, if things had to be done physically in Sydney, then we would do them. So those are the main, the main things. Okay. And um, when you got started, I, I can't remember, how many, how many team members did you start with to begin with? Uh, we started with one. Yeah. Um, and just to see how it went. And um, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, within four months, she actually resigned because she had had a, a job um, that she had applied for in Korea two or three years prior, she decided to take the position. And I was, um, 
devastated at first, <laughs> but it was really, it was really, it gave me, it gave me such a sense of confidence that I had made the right decision because she was fantastic. And the girl that we hired um, was fantastic. And between um, the videos that I had created and uh, the, the cross training that they did, they did it all. And the only thing that I had to do was check the work of the new person for one or two times that they did whichever task they did. And that was that. And pretty much it's been like that since I hardly do, do any training. And that, that girl, four years later, she's still one of our main, um, you know, sort of the main, um, the main um, workers. Yeah. Awesome. No, no, that's good to hear. Mm. So yeah. you've grown the team. I think there's about seven or nine staff in total now yeah. on the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is that putting putting those team players uh, putting those team members in place over here? What has that enabled you to do in Australia? I, I mean, just I mean, li li um, liberating or <laughs> freeing up that the labour cost was a was a huge huge. Um, probably the biggest change um, as well as the, the increase in productivity um, because we're just able to, to do more and the things that you just never get done, we can now get done. So it just freed up a lot of, um, you know, resources overall. Yeah. Would it yeah. be okay to share the, the numbers that you yeah. shared last week? Yeah. So um, at the time, so that if we have seven or eight staff members, um, and so at that time it was costing us around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Those labour costs for those seven people, mm -hmm. and um, now it's around a hundred thousand. So that's a seventy-five percent savings in labour costs. Yeah. And if you were to add all that up over the last, um, what, oh yeah, something. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a cost saving of one point four million dollars wow. for the business. And um, I was um, in, in preparation for this. I was actually reminiscing with the, the business owner. And um, I said to him, I said, if I hadn't done this, do you think he would have done this? And he said, I probably wouldn't have because he didn't have, you know, he just, he knew, you know, that it just needed to be, you know, that it might, may not have been done because yeah. of the, the, the barriers. Yeah. And, and how much of a competitive advantage is that given that business, do you think? Well, I just, I think we're, able, we're just able to, uh, um, you know, it's, it's hard to know like what would have happened and what could have happened, but um, you know, it's, 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 I won't say this, it, I won't say it kept the business afloat, but it had, you know, in the four years there have been challenging times, probably talking about Google Google, um, you know, algorithms on SEO and, you know, the fluctuations and Google AdWords used to be, you know, bread and butter of the business. And then one day, yeah, maybe about three years ago, it was like, we, we, they couldn't afford to continue on with Google AdWords. So, you know, they, it was just, it just enabled the business to just, to just keep running. And it is, and it, the, you know, Dale Beaumont, who's the, who um, runs the business workshop that I, um, attended, you know, he said, um, that, you know, one of the barriers is, oh, we need, you know, it's outsourcing is not good because it's not good for the Australian economy because we're taking the jobs offshore. And it re and, and then he said, you reframe that because a lot of small businesses would be struggling to stay afloat in the current economic climate. So yeah. offshoring actually helps to keep the, pe the people afloat. And this is not to say that this business would have gone, gone under um, without this step. But I know, I mean, with a $1.4 million saving, I mean, it, it does make a difference. Yeah. And you, you've got yeah. to be, you've got to continually be you know, keeping up with technology and, and rolling with the times. And we can be sitting there, you know, bashing our, our drums and saying, you know, we can grow our own food, we can manufacture our own cars, we can, you know, we should be doing everything in house. But the reality is, you know, it doesn't matter what, what we think or, or you know, what, what we believe is, is um, should happen because technology and, and global economy is going to march on without you and you either reinvent yourselves and you, uh, you, know, you, you, you embrace these things. Otherwise, you, you go the way of, um, you know, Kodak film. Yep. Okay, so um, I guess my last question for you, if I may, is if knowing what you know now, you know, four years or so later, what would you do differently back four years ago to maybe do this faster or, or maybe slightly different or would you do everything exactly the same or, you know, what advice would you give people sort of 
on the fence about um, whether they should do it and you know, if they should, what would you do differently? I just think anybody, everybody should do it who has a, a large team. I mean, I feel that it's a much easier sell um, for people that do have an existing workforce of course. Um, that they see the potential because when you're talking about a couple of hundred, a, a couple, not a couple of hundred, a couple of grand to do the transition um, and then you, you're potentially saving, you know, um, you know, 30 or 40 or thousand dollars per worker per year, you know, and then you, you compound that year on year. It's, it's, it, to me, it's such a, it's a, it's like a no brainer. And yes, it does take work to, to make sure that you've got everything set up. Um, so to me, it's a no brainer. It really, it really is something um, to, um, to do as, you know, as soon as possible. Um, and what I also like about it is that it just gives, it does give you options. So it's, it's, you know, the, like the nice to haves, Mm -hmm. of oh wouldn't it be great if we could just for every lead that our you know we close that's given to us by that you know that client wouldn't it be great if we could send them a bunch of flowers and you know we have these great ideas but it's like who's there to do that stuff when we we can barely keep up with just servicing our clients and and, and finding new clients so mm -hmm. it just allows for more um a more more of a human you know a, a more of a human touch and um yeah and and yeah so that that that's that's um, for people that have an existing team. And I, th I think for people that are looking to build new teams, um, it, is, it is a little bit more, it feels a bit more risky, um, but it, because they don't have the reference point of how heavy it is, that perpetual labor cost month after month after month and how that feels. So, um, but it's definitely worth, um, worth doing, yeah. So yeah, I, I guess that would be my, um, you know, make it a priority and do it because once you free up um, you know, you get more uh, labor resource and you can free up some of your cash flow. It can really make a big difference um, in your business. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. See you soon.